Okay, I'm gonna take you through how to replace the front discs and pads on a Porsche Cayenne 958. This particular one is a 2015 facelift model. The tools I'm gonna use for this job are a torque wrench, a 19 millimeter wheel nut socket, a size M14 spline, a brake pad spreader, some cleaning tools, some screwdrivers, and a six millimeter hex or Allen key. I'm also using copper grease and brake cleaner, and these are the parts that we will be replacing today, a sensor, pads, and the brake disc. Okay, first things first, we're gonna have to jack up the car. So I've put a solid rubber hockey pad on my jack and I am going to put that underneath there. You can get special blocks that fit in there but the hockey pad is plenty secure for that. So position that nicely under there. Make sure we clean. There we go. Now we can just jack it up. Doesn't have to be massively high for this job, just high enough so that the wheel can move. So let's take the wheel bolts out. Remember this is a size 19, obviously you need your safety key for the locking wheel nut as well. Okay, so that's the wheel off. Um, I've also turned the steering wheel to full lock to the left. I'm obviously if you're on the other side, it would be the opposite of that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this plug here, which just slides down like that. You take this little rubber grommet thing off the bleeding nipple without obviously Working that just pay attention um, and remember that the sensor is in fact on the inside pad um, that's important later because it actually fits on both but the length of the cable and positioning is such that it has to be on the inside of the pad so once that's done um, let's move on to the next thing so the next thing for many people is just an optional thing um, I just like to give myself a little bit more breathing space. So behind the um, whole carrier unit, there's a little number six hex key. Um, I'm gonna undo that, which will release, release sorry, the whole um, bracket that holds the sensor wires, the ABS sensor wires, but also it holds the, um, where are we, there. It holds the solid brake line to the flexible, flexible brake line, so it'll just give us a little bit more maneuvering when we end up taking the whole caliper off. So let's just get that done real quick. Comes off pretty easy. Um, tends to be quite clean. Make sure later when you tighten it up, you don't over tighten it because it doesn't have to be super tight. So just take that off. It's just a little short bolt. Okay, so next we're actually going to take the whole caliper unit off. That's just a case of removing this one and this one. Both are really tight. So let's go ahead and get that done. So we don't have to take them all the way out yet because we have to loosen the pads up a little bit. So I'm just going to loosen them up like this. Make sure it's well seated so that you don't wreck the bolts. And this one. 
Obviously, if you don't have one of these tools, then a brake bar will just work. Um, just make sure you keep it nice and straight so that you don't wreck these heads. Um, a lot of people recommend that you swap these over. Um, I don't normally, maybe if I've changed them over a few times, um, but this is the first time that this is getting done, so I'm, I'm perfectly happy with keeping them the way they are, um, as long as you torque them the right way. So let's go ahead and spread the brake pads a little bit. Okay, so the purpose here is not to spread them all the way. I just want them to be released from the disc so I can take the caliper off in a little bit. So gentle pressure. Um, obviously, you can be a little bit more careful when you want to reuse your brake pads. You see this is nice and loose now, so that's good enough for me. So I'm going to take the rest of these bolts off real quick. Actually, I'm going to get a little support first to put the whole caliper unit on. I'm just going to go get a bucket real quick. Okay, so let's just position this bucket here where it can go and be comfortable. I've got a piece of wood I'm going to use to just support the back of the thing. You don't put too much pressure on this line here. Um, okay, so that's not coming off, which is indicative of the brake pads not having been released enough. I'm just going to give that a little bit more. There we go. Just that. And I'm just folding this. Let's make sure it's got space. So just folding that back and I'm just leaving that there. So you can see the whole unit is off now. Bolts just go into the carrier there. So next we're just going to take off the disc real quick, which is really easy. Torx 45. Let's just get that off real quick. Okay, so like I said, it's going to be pretty easy. Just make sure it's well seated, especially if you're using power tools. That's it. Easy as that. So now we'll take the disc off. It'll most likely to not be pretty solid, so you need a bit of a, a hammer. Um, again, if you're reusing the disc, you need a little bit more care. I'm actually using a copper hammer, which we perfectly fine, or you can use like a rubber mallet or a wooden mallet. Okay, nice and easy. Next thing we have to do then is give the hub carrier, like the hub itself, a good clean. You just want to get this as clean as you can. Any particle in there can mess up with the seating of a disc. I mean, any misseating causes gutter issues and all that. But the bigger the discs are, um, the more pronounced a small particle can be. So you have to take extra care with these kind of cars that use heavy rotational discs. Break that's clean, and you'll see I got a tray under there to pack up all the crap. I'm actually going to use a little bit of air. great if you have it all right so that's ready now for the new disc let me go get that bad boy real quick 
and we'll get that put on after we clean it. Okay, so these new discs will always come with a little bit of a coating on, which you'll want to wipe off. So just simply spray on some brake cleaner and then wipe it off. Make sure there's no residues left. Except for the brake cleaner, which is fine. Alright, turn it around. with nicely painted parts like this you want to make sure they're clean when you put them on one of the benefits right. so. okay so let's get that on there so I get my little bolt ready I get my ratchet ready Hold it in because it doesn't want to stay there. Just get this to grip in. Probably because I'm trying to put in the wrong hole. Let's try it up there. Alright, cool. This doesn't have to be super tight. Um, it's just really to keep it to the face, but the real pressure while driving is exerted by the wheel mounting and anything rotationally mostly is done by the five uh, wheel bolts. So this doesn't have to be super tight. You would like to get it off again, I'm sure. Let's give it a quick wipe down. You see there's some overspray under this from the paint that's on here. These are patched discs. Um, don't worry about those things, that'll just scrape right off with the brake pads going over. So let's get the brake pads changed. All right, let's get these changed over. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to spread them out because we want all um, pistons to be compressed for easy fitting later. I just use one of these basic spreaders. Um, you can get them anywhere. This happens to be a Paget branded one. Um, I think it's probably exactly the same as any of the cheaper ones that you can get on Amazon. Um, but it makes easy work. You don't have to be faffing around because the only thing you're using a screwdriver for now is to just get it off, which is easy. And then you just take your time, slowly compress the things, use the brake pads so that everything goes nice and evenly. You hear the squeaking. Hopefully that will be one of the things that disappears once we got the new stuff on. Um, you can also put a ratchet on these things. I just use the little time. If you need more than this, then something's stuck and you probably don't want to force these things. So. Um, just play that on, on the feeling that you have. So, okay, so once it gets tight, you know it's there. You just unwind them a little bit. That should be absolutely fine there. Click. Done. So, calipers are completely compressed. All that we need to do now is take the pads off. Make sure you don't exert force on the pistons. Do it on the other points of which there are plenty and it just slides off like that this is the pad that has the sensor on there we go maneuver that through there remember inside pad has a sensor on so you see it's starting to wear it down these pads aren't super bad they've got quite a bit of life in them but um, i just recently bought this car myself um, I just want to make sure it's in good neck. I'm going to take it to switch lines and stuff, so um, the brakes will be heavily used. So let's get that cleaned up. I'm going to take these pressure. Yeah. This is off. Let's. There we go. Watch your eyes. This one is really embedded there. 
you can change these over again first time I'm quite happy with just giving them a good clean you'll see they're really dirty when I come back they'll be nice and clean um, you can remove some of the loose crud that's on there don't scrape it too hard I mean you don't want to ruin the finish on your nice big brake calipers um, Give it a good, nice clean. So, uh, you'll see some of the pieces of crud um, that are just a little bit loose break dust. Just get it on there. And then, uh, I'm going to blow it. There's going to be a lot of dust. is really bad so if you're concerned about your long-term health you either don't do that or you wear a mask so all right we're going to clean that up a little bit more in a bit okay so these are nice and clean really the most important thing with these is the contact points right so these are contact points and these are contact points. You just want to make sure that they're really clean so that nothing is obstructed or misplaced. Um, like I said, if you want to replace them, go ahead. Um, if they were with the brake pads, which the symptoms are, if you manage to get your hands on a kit, then that's great. Just replace them. Um, otherwise, you know, as long as they're not massively worn down, it's absolutely fine. There's a nice healthy bit of tension on them still and plenty of material. Um, I'm just going to go and clean this a little bit more with my brake cleaner and brush. Things to check for, obviously, make sure all the rubbers are in good condition. That um, you, know, you want it to feel on the, especially when you're spreading it, that nothing is stuck. Um, these pins, um, you know, these are replaceable. So if they look worn um, or they're massively corroded or something like that, then obviously you need to replace them. Everything looks in good shape. Um, you know, it's, I'm not making them uh, pristine and super clean. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the springs back on. I'm going to get a little bit of copper grease. And we're going to sparingly put some on those contact points that I mentioned. Um, there are just so many things that can cause squeaks on these brakes. You just want to make sure that, you know, for the sake of a little bit of grease, um, you cover those things they seem to be massively sensitive so if you see I'm just putting the slightest of layers on there making sure it's not like a whole dollop on there um, wipe off anything that goes beyond where I want it to go um, so they just go on like that and they push fit in there um, so if you put your finger there Put a screwdriver in between and slightly move that while you keep pushing, it goes in there nice and easy. So, same thing again, just a tiny amount on the pressure points right there, a little bit here. That's probably a little bit too much for my liking. Let's get that more spread out. Okay. So, same thing again, you just put that in there, make sure you don't make any other rubbers. Um, pressure on there, screwdriver in between. I need my thumb for that pressure. Sorry if I'm in the view. Okay. There we go. Alright, so, cool. 
so next thing we'll do is we'll put a tiny little bit of copper grease on the guiding pins. Um, it does two things, obviously it lubricates something, stops it from potentially squeaking. Um, it's also quite a good cleaning sort of thing. I know some people think that you're basically mixing dust with the grease. But, you know, if you sort of clean them like I did before, you minimize that anyway. And I've never, ever had any issues with that. So next we have um, our pads. I'm actually going to put the sensor on the inside pad first. Check if I got that right. So we're going to put that there. Cool. So the sensor, you just basically slide in. Done. It wasn't that hard. You take these caps out or you'll struggle. Um, let's put that there. Again, you don't have to do this because in principle these plates are actually there to prevent squeaking and they will have material in between them. Um, this doesn't hurt anything. Um, this is from way back. I've been doing this and I've never had any issues um, with squeaking brakes that I fitted myself. So, okay. Let's guide that through there. Be careful that we don't mess that up. So, there is a little bit of pressure on those pins there. So, we push down on it. Push down until the holes match up and then quite simply slide it on there simple as that so let's get the other pad again we pop these bad boys out put a bit of copper grease on there you can also use red rubber grease um, I've always used copper grease personal preference um, obviously make sure you don't get any on the pad material itself um, so you do need to be mindful of where you stick your fingers. Okay. Alright, so make sure my fingers are clean. Let's put those in there like that. So again we position them on the sliding springs. Push down, push down, and don't put them enough on an angle and you won't be able to get them on properly. So there we go. Nice, make sure there's nothing on the pad material. Give that a quick spray, quick spray. Oh good. So that's the caliper ready to be put back on. So let's get that done now. Okay, let's get it back on. So it should go on nice and easy because we compressed the piston nice. Easy. We just slide that on, line up the holes. Just get the bolts. You want to hand fasten these things. Well, not fasten, but get them thread by hand. Often a bit of wiggling like this helps. If you can't do it by hand, certainly the first few twists, you don't want to force that because you have to change that if you ruin the thread. So, cool. So we're just going to tighten that real quick with the impact. I'm not going to tighten it all the way, it's just for speed. So that's a pretty low torque. And then we get our torque wrench which uh, I'm going to set for 180. Okay. Make sure it's well seated. There we go. Nice and easy. Let's line the sensor up, goes in there. Goes on the bleeding nipple. Slides in there, click. So now we just need our little bolt for the back. 
with our hex key. Good, that's in place. These are nice and secure. That's on, um, these have been torqued correctly. So now we'll get the bucket out of the way, put the wheel back on, straighten the wheel, make sure you push your brake pads a few times, and that's it. If you have any more questions, just ask in the comments. Otherwise, good luck.